Hi everyone. Today we are going to be adding more to our knowledge of solving exponential equations. And we're going to start off with this, these three problems here that um, don't even have numbers as their basis, they just have symbols. And the reason that we're showing you them like this is because we want you to recognize when you are able to solve these things algebraically and when you are not. So looking at the first two, you'll notice that the bases of each of these are the same on the left and on the right. So the first one, the bases are both squares. So that means you can just drop the bases and set the exponents equal to each other. And you just get that x equals 1. Not a big deal. Same thing here. The bases are both triangles. So you can just drop the bases and set the exponents equal to each other. The third one, there's a one side has a base of a triangle and the other one has a base of a square. And unless these two bases were powers of each other, like triangles of four and squares an eight, then there is nothing algebraic you can do and you need another method. And we will not be talking about that method today. That method that comes into play is logarithms. And so we'll revisit this problem on another date when we can look at logs. Right now, we'll try to solve things algebraically, and this one cannot be solved algebraically. Okay, so we're just going to go through a few, and they're going to get progressively a little bit more difficult. Um, make sure you stop the video if you don't understand and write down any questions you might have. So for this first problem, all we have to do is just rewrite 4 as 2 squared, and now the bases are the same. And so you can set the exponents equal to each other, and we just get x equals 1, which should make sense when you look at the problem. The second one, we just have to take 9 and rewrite it as 3 squared. And then you have to remember your exponent rules and know that a power to a power is the powers are multiplied together. So now I have bases that are the same and I can set the exponents equal to each other. And then I have some algebra I have to solve. So I have to be careful with my algebra here. So I'm gonna move the two X to the left and then factor out an X. And I am left with X times X squared minus two. So X either equals zero or x equals plus or minus root 2. And then you're going to go back and look at the answers, like put them back into the problem and see if that makes sense. So if I put the square root of 2 in for x here, I get 2 to the 3 halves in this spot. And if I put root 2 here, I get 2 root 2, which is also 2 to the 3 halves. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, stop it and write it down if you're not sure. All right, number three here. All three of the numbers or the bases need to be rewritten, or at least two of them, I guess I should say. So I get two to the x times two to the negative um, three x equals two to the two x. So then I'm going to combine like terms. So remember when you're multiplying two things with the same base, you add the powers. So it looks like this. So we're getting negative 2x equals positive 2x. Well, this really just gives me, um, excuse me, 4x equals 0. So then the only thing that works actually is x equals 0. Maybe you could have figured that one out from the very beginning. Okay, number four, everybody always gets freaked out about E's. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. I am going to rewrite E, 1 over E squared, as E to the negative 2. And again, I know that when the bases are the same, I add the exponents. And now that the base on the left equals the base on the right, I can set the powers equal to each other. So I get x squared equals three, excuse me, three x minus two. Bring the three x and the two over and factor. 
and I get two answers, x equals one and x equals two. And I do wanna check just to make sure that they work. So when I put one in here, I get e equals e cubed over e squared. So one works. And when I put two in here, I get e to the fourth equals e to the sixth over e squared, which e to the sixth over e squared would also be e to the fourth because you subtract the powers there. So those both work. All right, last two problems here. So I have three to the two X minus one, and then 81 is three to the fourth. So now I'm going to set the powers equal to each other and I just get that X equals five over two. Okay, the last one is kind of tricky. So it says if seven to the negative x equals one third, what does seven to the five x equal? So I'm trying to figure out what seven to the five x equals. Well, I'm actually gonna rewrite this. So I have seven to the x to the fifth. So then I've got kind of this side of the problem working and then I'm gonna rewrite this left side as well. And I'm gonna rewrite seven to the negative x as seven to the x to the negative one. And then I'm going to flip the fraction so that I know, let me just do this so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so really I have one over seven to the x equals one over three. Well, I could just flip those fractions or cross multiply if I wanted to think of it like that. And I get oops, seven to the x equals three. So now I'm gonna take that three and substitute it in for seven to the X and I get seven to the five X equals three to the five. And three to the five, I think I know, but I don't wanna be wrong, is 243. Sorry, did I say three to the five? I hope I said three to the five, okay. And there you are. And you're not being asked to solve for X, you're being asked to solve what seven to the five X is equal to. All right, hope that all makes sense.